Bruchem Aboim B'Shem Hashem B'Shem Egen Shir Teri of the Republic to introduce Harav Yaakov Zev Smith for today's Shir on Mitzvah Ner Chanukah L'Misha Enim B'Beisoy Away from home, where is Ner Chanukah lit? I would like to have the great school sponsoring a Shir called Egen Shir Teri at 718-851-8651 Now a minute is before Yom Tov we try to give the Elam something Gishmak to take home of the Zevach Mishpach, food for thought when you sit with the family. I think today's whole sugya is one big Gishmaka uh, sugya, which is Negei Lamaisa, but it's also a sugya of Tein Lechach and Vayach Kamaid. You could take it and it's Maisa Vahailach. The sugya goes and goes and goes. And let me tell you where I started. Someone that works, lives in Brooklyn, works in Lakewood, and had a chasen on one of the nights of, chasen, uh, of Hanukkah in Lakewood. So he certainly wasn't going to go home, come back to Brooklyn Light and go back. So he wanted to know if he could light either in a shul, he lights with the shuls at Lock in Lakewood, or light in the Hasana Hall. Someone that works late during the nights of Hanukkah, could he light in his workplace? He owns the store, he owns the business, could he light in his workplace? The Bacha in Yeshiva, who lights in Beis Medrash for the Tzibur, and he's in the same building, he, that's his dorm, he sleeps there, he eats there. Can he be yoitzah with the adlaka that he does for the yeshiva? And I'll tell you an interesting question, which is not Negea in here in America, but in Eretz Yisrael, if it's still warm, and it's certainly in Australia, in Australia right now is summer. So the Hanukkah is also the summer vacation, believe it or not. So there are people that go on an overnight hike and they camp out. So they are mamish tachas kippas hashemayim, is there a, are they allowed to light, are they mechuyiv to light when they're outdoors? So if you notice, the common denominator of all these questions are, we know that you need uh, oil and a wick and a menorah to light near Hanukkah. Do you need a bias? Is a bias absolutely necessary for the mitzvah near Hanukkah? And if you do need a bias, can I light in someone else's bias? And it's, why can't I light in the wedding hall? Why can't I light in the shul? You do need a bias, perhaps, but why? who said it's my bias necessarily? And a very good muscle would be a homeless person that has no bias. Could he just light in the street? So, basically, m- many mitzvahs are anywhere you are say, you could, wherever you want. You could listen to Kiddush, you could have an outdoor Kiddush, you could be Yaitza. You could be out to someone else's house, kiddush. You could hear Avdol in someone else's house. You could blow. You could hear Shaif in someone else's shul. So why should we think their Hanak is totally in a bias? But then again, their Shabbos does have a Shaif as to a bias. So let me just make a point. Of, I think we'll bring out the challenge of this sugya. We once spoke a number of years ago about about a, about a, a totally different shaila, and that is the old question. How do we describe the nature of Ne'er Chanukah? There are some mitzvahs that we call a chayvas haguf. And a marshal, every, every person has to eat matzah. Every, person has to, every man has to wear tefillin. That's a, a chayv in every single person. Then you have a mitzvah for the family. For one person in the family. For, for example, mezuzah. Mezuzah, you have to put up a mezuzah. Now... Let's say the father puts up mezuzah on Sunday and the son decides on Monday, I want to be mahajim in a mahajim. And he puts up a second mezuzah with a bracha. So he got two mitzvahs, bracha levatala and baltaisif. Right? You can't put up a second mezuzah. It's one per family. What is the understanding of the ner Hanukkah? Is it a chayvas haguf? Every person has a chayv, every man and woman and child. Is it a din and the bias? So to make a very long story short, Ner Hanukkah is not so easy to characterize. Because Lamaisa, there's a chiv and every person to light Ner Hanukkah, no doubt about it. But the uniqueness of Ner Hanukkah is, it's a Ner issue Beisai. The father could light, and his yoy to the whole family. By Svardim Ada Yoy Mazer, the father lights, and the Bachram, the boys do not light. So... It's a different type of mitzvah. It's a chiyav on every person to make sure that he has a mitzvah of Ner Chanukah in his house. Now, the chiddush is that for us Ashkenazim, we have an option of mahajim in a mahajim. I don't have to be yaitz with my father, I can light my own. 
But at the end of the day, it's a chayva saguf that can be discharged with the bias. And that's a wonderful sugya, which is not for today. Today we're beyond that. I know it's a mitzvah on me and you, we, I could be yaitza with someone else, but it's a mitzvah on each and every one of us. Now the question is, it's a mitzvah on me, do I have to have a bias? Can I light when I'm camping out? Can I light in the street? Can I light in an airport terminal? Do I have to be my bias? So you're wondering, what's the shayla? Who doesn't know the well-known Gemara in Shabbos, Chaf Aleph from the Bays? Mitzvah is Chanukah, Ner Ishu Beisai. No? You see, Befeir you have to have a bias. But that's not a raya at all. Because in that context, Beisai means family. Rashi says Befeir Ish. Ish v'chol b'nei Beisai. So Beisai means family, not home, not the structure of the home. If you look in the Rambam, in the beginning of Perik Dalar, the Chanukah, the Rambam says, Mitzvah says, she yakol bayis u bayis madlik. Ner Echa. That's the Rambam she does say. But the Ikadin, one there is enough per family, called bias. So here he doesn't say basa, he says bias. But truth be told, even the word bias doesn't mean that you have to have a bias. Bias means per home. Like the Svaradim do, there's one hadlaka per home. So Rabbi said, whenever we have a, 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 a question, we like to say, In other words, first of all, we have rayas one way. And also, the Svara says the same. No, Lambali cross Svara. So if you have a Raya and you have a Svara, you are very confident. In today's Sugya, I found it challenging because the Svara goes one way and the Kra, the Raya, goes the other way. Now let me explain. Let's think objectively. Does Ner Chanukah need a bias? So in Svara, there's no reason to believe you need a bias. The objective of Ner Chanukah is Pursume Nisa. So why should it be dependent on a bias? And don't forget, in the times of the Mishnayis, they lit outdoors. So it wasn't in a bias. So imagine the following. You have Moshe Oisha has a 32-room mansion, and he lights Kalacha, Pesach Beisai. Comes along, Yankel the Ani, doesn't even own a home, he's homeless. He says, can I light next to you on your Pesach Beisai? So, young, so Moshe Aisha says, sure, because on day, right? Can you tell any difference between Moshe Aisha and Yankul the Onis had Lakis near Hanukkah? They're both outdoors. What's the difference? Pesume Nisa is achieved by, by a Menorah. Now, Mezuzah needs a doorpost, Pasha, because practically. But why should Ner Hanukkah be totally in bias as long as you have the necessary Menorah that makes Pesume Nisa? Now, I, what do you mean? We, we, every year we have Shilas about I'm eating someplace sleep, and sleeping somebody else. So you see, you need a bias. Oh, that's true. Once you want to be Mahajan and do it right, what's the better place? I mean, the whole Nerchanik is Mahajan. But who said a homeless person doesn't have a Chiv? And who says someone that's camping out has no Chiv? If it's Pisume Nisa, it's a Mitzvah. But here's the challenge because I could say, Iboyis e Mikra, it's Kamara Beferish Gemara that you need a bias. One of the unique halachas regarding Ner Chanukah is the Gemara in Shabbos Chav Gimel, Haroya Ner Chanukah Tzarech Levarech. And as Rashi and Taisis explain, if someone doesn't have a home and doesn't have the mitzvah like his Ner Chanukah, what should he do? Do nothing? So there's a special Chiddush, there's a Brichas Haroya. The first night of Chanukah, when this person who can't light sees someone's Menorah, he makes the bracha shasanisim and shachianu. And all subsequent nights, he makes the bracha of the shasanisim. He does not make the bracha lahadlik because he's not doing the ma'isim mitzvah. But there's a birchas haroya, even if someone can't do the mitzvah. So Rashi, on that Gemara, says, Why do we have a special birchas haroya? Someone that not madlik bebeisai, oi liyoshe besvina. He's on a boat. So what's wrong if he's on a boat? Apparently a boat is not a bias and he can't light. So as the Rush explains, he's on a boat but he could see from the distance someone's home. He sees a menorah, you make a bracha. Now, what's wrong with a boat? If you don't need a bias, why can't you light in the boat? But Tois is in Sukkadaf, Memvav is more mafurish. Tois is mamish asset point blank. Why is the Brichas Haroya by Nechanukah not by, by Lulav? Don't forget, Lulav was much more expensive than Nechanukah. 
So Taisis Mishum Shayesh Kama Bani Adam Shain Lam Bottim Vain Biyadam the Kaima Mitzvah. So Taisis seems to say if there's no bias, there's no mitzvah. Now, we could really add that you could borrow someone else's Dalad Minim, like Eden did for Doris. They waited online line in the Rav's house and they, they, they benched on the Rav's Dalad Minim. But you can't borrow someone's house. So the Birchus Haraya indicates if there's no bias, there's no mitzvah. The Taz in Tafresh Ayin Zayin, Sif Cotton Bay, is a very fundamental Taz for us today. The Taz writes that an Achsanoi, who's a guest that's staying by you, could be included in your Ner Chanukah. But says the Taz emphatically, but if someone comes to your house just for a Suda and leaves you after the Suda, he cannot light in your house. He's not enough of a guest. And that's like, Ki'ilu oimed b'shasad loka al rechoiv ho'ir, the ain shaykh loy had loka. Someone that just comes to you for, for supper and goes, cannot light in your house. He's like lighting on the street that's unthinkable that there's a mitzvah of Ne'er Hanukkah. So the Taz says both of our chedushim that we need. First of all, you can't light on the street. The homeless person can't light. You need a bias. And even if you have a bias, but it's not your bias, it's your host bias, you can't light there. So the Taz is clear as day not only do you need a bias, homeless person can't light, but he can't just ring a, ra- a, ran- a random doorbell, let me light in your house. No, it has to be a bias and has to be your bias. Rav Moishin Yeredeya Chayla Gimbal Sim Yudal Tzif Katan Hay says, Beferish, if someone's sleeping outdoors or he's traveling, he can't, he's part of their Hanukkah. No bias, no hadlaka. And Rav Shtan Bezalman in is very convinced that since the mitzvah is near ish ubeisa, he says, you need a bias. Pesach beisa is good. If it's your beisa, then outdoor Pesach is good. The outdoor Pesach beisa. But if you don't have a bias, there's no chiv. So here we see Rishonim, early Achreinim, the Taz, and Haintig Achreinim are all convinced the bias is absolutely necessary. But then we find Rishayinim, the Kolboy and Memdalit and the Arches Chayim and the Mordechai, three Rishayinim that say, if someone's traveling by boat, he could, he could light on the boat. Ah, it's not a bias. Evidently, they hold, you don't need a bias. As long as you have the, the Ner Chanukah light, I guess the Svar is, Pesume Nisa is the deciding factor. The Levush, the Talmud of the Ramah and Tafesh Ayin Zayim Beis, he says, Halon Be'er, someone is sleeping over in a, Be'er, I'm sorry, Halon Be'er, he's sleeping in a forest, Oy Hoylech Besvina, Tzorech Lahadlik Ulevarech. So he's, Mom is talking about camping out, I guess he lived in a warmer climate, and if you camping out, you make a bracha of Ner Chanukah. Dorach HaShulchan in our Sim and Sif Hay, says for Dov Pashit, someone that's traveling by a train, Lights on the train and makes a bracha. What's the pshat? I, it's not a bias. Who said you need a bias? As long as it promotes the mitzvah of Prisume Nisa, that's all you need. The Tzitzeliez and Tezvav Chavtes was Mamish asked one of our Shilas. I guess it's from somebody who lives in the Southern Hemisphere, where now it's summer, and he wants to camp out, Tachas Kipas Hashemayim Al Pnei Asada. He says, What's the problem? The Chiyav Ner Chanak who akakafta de Gavra v'loy toli babayis. As clear as can be, it's a Chiyav on the person. He doesn't need a bias. He says, I, there is some, I, Rashi says that you can't light on the boat. That's Pashat because you're talking about a case where you didn't have the oil or it's going to blow out. But on a boat, he says, there is Shayna, so you could light. It must be, as long as it works, you, you could be yoyt. I, Rashi says that if you, that you need a bias because a, a homeless person generally doesn't have oil or wick. I, and in a Maftech, he says, I, Toysvi says, ain't no bias. She says, it's Pashat Eichetimsa. If a person that's traveling and he's wandering, he doesn't have the necessary menaira, oil, or wicks. But it's not necessary to have a bias to light. The most convinced, the Oznid Bru, of Yaman Zilban, Chaylik Vav, Ayin Hay, he says, I heard people say you have to have a bias for their Hanukkah. There's no basis for this. 
And he says, Mamish Awatain, if it ain't mitzvah near Hanukkah, Michuki, a Torah, it's not a Gzer Sakosov, El Yisoida Pesume Nisa. So why should it be necessary to have a bias? Then in Chelik Zion, Simon Samach Zion, he says, someone that's in the Midbar, Avada could light. He says, even a boat, he says, you could light, like we saw in the Rishonim. I, the Paiskim, that question, Mokam Achila, Mokam Sheina, that's Lechatchila. You want to do things Mahajim and Mahajim, but it's not Ma'akiv. But the biggest Chiddush, he says, in Chelik Yud Aleph, Simon Lamed Beis, he says, let's say there's an Alto Asifa. And again, in America, we don't have Alto Asifas in the winter. But let's say in Eretz Yisrael, again in, in Australia, those warm countries, and they make a big Asifa outdoors. And he says, there, you could have had a light with a bracha. Because everybody else lights outdoors uh, in times of the Mishnayis. So why is this different? So he's promised saying that you don't need a bias at all. And then in your Aleph Lamedalad, he says, if you're camping out, you can make a bracha. This Rabbi Isai is a Paisic dilemma. So Rashi and Tai seem to say you need a bias, and we found Rishayim, you don't. The Taz says you need a bias, and the Levush says you don't. You have Ramosh and Rishayim Azalm say you need a bias, and the Haintagar Chayim Maznidru, Tzitzeliezer, the Rachashuk and say you don't need a bias. So who could be Machriya? Certainly not I. But basically, what it makes sense to say is. If someone right now doesn't have a bias and he will get a bias, he will come home later tonight, even if it's late at night, as long as it's before Alois Hashachar, we allow a light with the bracha when it, when it couldn't do earlier, he should wait till he gets home. If someone is taka homeless or he's camping out and his mamish, there's no bias at all that night, Avada, he should light where he is, but not make a bracha, al tzafik brachas. But what I want, to, I want to mention is, let's say someone is a and say, I have a great idea. Mm-hmm. Let him light outdoors or let him light uh, in, when he's camping out. And let him make two of the three brachas, Mamonashach. He'll make the bracha of Shasanisim and Shechayonu. If I'm Chayiv to light as a homeless person, so it was good. Let's say I'm not Chayiv, but minimally it will be a Bechas So he can't lose. But it's not true. Because if indeed you're not chayiv to light outdoors, so it's not a ma'isat lakam. You can't make a birchas haroya on a non You can't make just light a candle and say, oh, haroya. In fact, there's a big machloikas ha poiskim if you could make a birchas haroya when you see the Daenerys in Beis HaKnesses, in the shul. Some say it's a nice menorah, but you're not yoy to the mitzvah. To make a roya, you have to have a ma'isat mitzvah. Even those that hold, you could make a bracha on the shul's menorah because it's a mitzvah. It's a takana chazal. It's a minig. But if you light a menorah that you're not yoytze with, you can't make a bracha. So the homeless person, if we hold that he's not chayiv in the mitzvah, so his adlok is not adlok. So it would not be a good idea to make a bracha saroya. Let him see someone else's. Then he can make a roya. Now consider the following question that has many nafkaminas. The, the Marsham in Chelek Dalek Kuf Memvov was asked if you could make light near Hanukkah Alaban on a train. So he writes, I didn't find uh, anything about this. Now, of course, that's very logical. They didn't have trains at times of the Rishonim. But we wonder, you didn't find something similar to a train? And what about a boat? Rashi talks about a boat, and all the Rishonim talk about a boat. But Lechaira. And this, I think, is an impo- a very important point. A train might be better than the homeless person. Let me explain. When we hear the word boat, so we think today in our mentality, a boat is like a five-star hotel that happens to be, you know, traveling along the ocean. You know, it's a cruise. The olden time boats were mamish a boat. You were out at the mercy of the sea, and that's why when you got back, you bench goimel. Say, name you bench goimel. The boat was an open area. That's why, you could have Rashi says, there's no hadlok is near Hanukkah on a boat. But a train, even in times of the Marsham, wasn't as luxurious as our trains, but it was enclosed, and you had your seat, maybe you had a cabin, you had your, but you had your Dalaramis. So maybe that's enough of a bias for Hilchus near Hanukkah. So even if a train, even if a boat is not good, because that's outdoors, but a train, you have your dollar you paid the fare, you have your seat. 
You eat there, you sleep there, and don't forget, they didn't travel uh, to Manhattan by train, they traveled a few nights, a few days. And you know who says this to Masham himself? The Masham himself, Rashi says, a Svina, you don't make a bracha, because it was open. But a train is a, a gather of a bias, and you could light on a train. He says, since you pay the, 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 the car fare, it's like you rented your, your area, and it's your bias. So Rabbi Isi, it comes out that there are actually two possibilities. The homeless person or the hiking person that's lighting tachas kippas ashamayim, there's no bias. That's a problem. A boat is also outdoors. There's no bias. But it could be regarding their Hanukkah, it's enough, what we call a semi-bias. And a train qualifies to be a semi-bias. And what's really beautiful, the Marsham asks on himself, how could I say you make a bracha on a train? A train is constantly going. Rach of Kemahalach, it's not a bias. So after Marsham, for Ner Hanukkah, it doesn't make a difference as Rach of Kemahalach. You don't need a bias in Hilcha Shabbos. It's enough that it's your area and it's what's rented to you. And he's, but it, what, what, what's really convincing, he says, you know why I say this? Because the Ikka of Ner Hanukkah is Besume Nisa. So what's wrong if it's traveling? So in other words, what I see from this is a sort of a compromise. Taka outdoors, the Marsham would hold, you can't light with the bracha. But if you're in a semi-bias and a train qualifies to be a semi-bias, that's enough of Pesume Nisa, enough of a bias, and you make a bracha. But what I found really gratifying, Rabbi Shleim Zalman, in that same true in Mincha Shleim, and he's the one that insists that you have to have a bias. He says, but if you have a small bias, we'll soon see for a soldier that's a Nebuch on the front lines, but if you have a small bias, less than Dalit al Dalit, even though the Mara says in Sukkot Av Gimel, a bias aimed by Dalit al is not considered a bias, but for this it's good enough. So Ms. Alman says, since it's only the eight days of Hanukkah, any bias is enough. And he quotes this Marsham. The Mikrei Kodesh in Simei Yitches also says you need a bias, but he also quotes the Marsham. So I understood and I'm comfortable to say that a person that has outdoors taka, we have a lot of pipes that you cannot light. But once you have your, I call it a little vincula, you have your place on the train, even though it's not a full-fledged bias, but if it's enough of your area, we saw the Marsham introduces us to this concept of a train, we'll soon see a car and a plane, etc., etc., but the point is, it's a semi-bias is enough. Now let's go weiter. Let's say this homeless person that doesn't have a train, but he decides to be a little aggressive, he rings the first doorbell he sees, can I light Hanukkah Licht in your house? If it's good for you, it's good for me, he says. That's not so posh it. Why? Because it's a bias, but it's not his bias. So basically, if you hold you need a bias, then it has to be his bias. And who says this? The Taz. The Taz that insists that you can't light at a person where you're eating for a Suda, it's akroy, it's not a bias, would say the homeless person cannot light in your house. Now, of course, if you want to do a chesed, invite him in for supper, invite him in to sleep over, then he becomes a b'nei abayis for the night. Then he could light in your house like your married children light in your house when they stay overnight. Reb Shleim B'Zalman in that same tshuva says, Poshet ein yoichin dey choyves ad loka b'bayis shel achar because it has to be your bias. And this reminds me of what, the, what it says in Shulchan Aruch and Tafresh Ayin Aleph Zayin where the Ramos says, the Ferish, you're not Yoitza, with the Hadlaka that's made in Shul. Zok to Goyin, Kedarki, very Bekitza, because Ner Ishu Beisai. And what does he mean to say? You have to have a bias. And finally, the Leket Yoisha, Amit 152, he says, you want to eat in one house, just a Suda, you can't light it. You have to light in your bias. So here we see part two of our question. Not only do you have to have a bias, and, and, and the homeless person, or the, the camping out, Cannot light outside. Number two, you have to have your bias. Now, what I saw of the Birchas Habayis, Nun Dalad Yud, has a very, he quotes the Taz, but he has an ice chap. He says, the person that lights in someone else's house has to light over at home. 
But when he lights oil at home, he doesn't make a new bracha. Why? He says, because the chaybas haguf that he has, he was yoitza in someone else's house. He only has now a chaybas habayis in his new in his real home. For, for that second adlaka, you don't make a bracha. In other words, lighting in someone's house is, it is worth something. But your boy said, what I think is poshit, if you hold, like those we show in the man, you don't need a bias. The homeless person could light anywhere you are saying. Outdoors, indoors, no chilek. So let me ask you, if you don't need a bias and you can light on the street, isn't it poshit that you yoyt the lighting in, in any person's house, a random home, even though you're not staying there? And that's taka why it makes sense. If you hold, you don't need a bias, and you can light outside, someone else's home is not worse than, than outdoors. And taka the Bach in Tafesh in Zion seems to say that you can't light in someone's house because your house has a chiv and there's a chashad. It does seem from the Bach, and there's a well known Sheiras Yois of Simon Ayin Gimel, the Kenyan Torah, and Hey Ayin Beis, also discusses this. That basically, if you're, you're supposed to light in your own house, but if someone lit B'dievin in someone else's house, it was Yoitz with that Hadlok. And the Kaddish Yisrael, Simon Aintes, has a nice lengthy tshuva and proves this, that if you hold that you don't need a bias, then someone's house is not worse. So we could say, avada, there, a person should light in his own home. You know, the base Yosef in Tough Ray Sadik regarding Gashail and Hilchas Purim but it's applicable to Hilchas Chanak as well. He says, any person, any investor, knows you don't make a questionable investment. You do what's most secure. So, Kolshkein, Bedarki, Atoyer, Vah Mitzvah, that's Kifshayne, Shel Oilam, don't be a Kunzmacha. Do what's certain L'chaladeis. So, Avada, we should say, someone that has the ability to light at home, should light at home, and be Chosh, that maybe you need a bias, and also... You have to have your bias to be yoitz the mitzvah. Now, a traveling person should make sure that he has a mitzvah near Hanukkah. Don't forget, this is an unusual mitzvah. The Mechaba quotes this in Tafresh Ayin Aleph, Sif Aleph. Sarach li zoh ma'oid ba'ad lakas near Hanukkah. Afili onu ham ani ha'mispanis min ha'tzadaka. Shoyel o'y mo'yecha kesusay. A person like Mr. Burr explains has to go either collecting to make money for oil or sell the shirt off his back. So how could a person travel and just uh, hope for the best? You know, we have to take this mitzvah very seriously. Rabbi Yashiv is quoted as saying that a person that for some reason doesn't have a home is probably mechuyev to rent a home just to be able to light their Hanukkah. Ah, he doesn't have a home now. But then again, if you have to sell the shirt off your back, you have to go collecting to buy oil. So why should the same obligation include renting a home? Okay, Reb Chaim Kanyevsky, Zaydim had a whole back and forth with Reb Yashiv. But the point is, it's a very prominent mitzvah. You know, people ask questions. I, I, I booked a flight and I'm leaving, I have to leave Brooklyn uh, before 3 o'clock and I can't light in the house, it's too early. I can't light on the plane, in the terminal. I get there, it's rolls the next morning. What should I do? What he should have done is, Chachamein Abarayshe. Try not to book a flight that you're going to miss the mitzvah curve near Hanukkah. Now he might be potter because he's traveling, but then again, potter is not doing the mitzvah. So avada, a person has to have the foresight to book a flight at a proper time that he could light near Hanukkah. Now, Lamaisa, someone asked, is it an Eitza to be makna, the, the homeless person, your bias? So, you know, this is something of Sashtikal Alam, this, you know, does it work, you know, Mechir as Chomitza, but even Mechir Ezcham, has a different, uh, is Mamash a regular Mechir, here you want to be Maknim, it's a Harama. Lamaisa, we hope the homeless person will find a place, someone will invite him, but what if you invite him in for the night, it becomes his bias for the night, and Avada he could light. Someone asked Abshleim Ezalman, he's camping out. So, he's part of, so Abshleim Ezalman, it's this quote, Halich Ezshleim, Amin Reish Nun Zayin, and gave him a, a heaping uh, portion of Musa. And he says, a mitzvah like this, you go camping out, you might be potter because you have no bias, but how do you do that? From his almond held, he is potter, but a techachas musa he got, a mitzvah chaviva, you don't put yourself in a matzah that you're potter. Now, what would be an eitzah for the camping out who insist on going out uh, is to get a tent. Now, a tent might not be a bias in other halachas, 
But for this, Rabbi Shlomo Zalman, I saw Rabbi Yashiv also says, for this, a tent is considered a bias. Now, the best day is to stay home for Hanukkah and camp out after Hanukkah, but basically, the bias doesn't have to be a real, full-fledged bias. Question. Somebody asked this question. He, again, lives in Brooklyn. He has a chasuna in Lakewood, and he works close to Lakewood. So to go home, come home and light and go back is much big of, too much big of a tircha. So he had an idea. He's going to, he's in shul. He wants to know, can he light, can he be yoitz with the outlook that he hears by Meir from Lakewood? I mean, it's, if it's good for the shul, it's good for me. So he's not keep us Hashemayim, he's in a shul and there's a, there's a regular hadlaka going on. So obviously, if you hold that you need your bias, more than just a bias, you need your bias, so then this is not a havamina. But let's say the sheets that hold, you don't need a bias, and outdoors is good, so someone else's house is also good, would this be an Eitzah? But the answer is no. Did you ever wonder why we light in shul, bichlal? Especially today, when no one lights there, no one's even there to be yoyed, so why do we light in shul? So the base Yosef in Tafresh Ayin Aleph quotes Rishonim. In those days, there were Orchim that had no place to, to go. On Shabbos, we make Kiddush for them, that was the Minig. We make Avdallah for them, and they were yoyed with that. So on their Hanukkah, we service them by giving them an Er Hanukkah. So like this base Yosef, like these Rishonim, I should say, the Ner Hanukkah in Shul is for the homeless people that have no other place to go. No, for them, it was their bias. But there's a, a very, you say to take a Rivosh in Simon Kuf Yud Aleph, and the Rivosh was asked about the Shamash that lights in Shul, but he has a home. Is he Yitz at Shul? So the, the Rivosh says emphatically, no, that this Adlaka in Shul is not to be Yitz. And he says it's an old minig, a minig vesikin, goes back to the Rishonim's time, obviously the Rivash himself was a Rishon. And he says that really the, uh, the optimum place to light was outdoors. And it must have been an awesome pisume nisa to see the streets full of hadlokis ner Hanukkah. But there came a terrible gezeira, we couldn't light outside. So to somehow replenish the, the missing pisume nisa, Chazal Masakin light in shul with Amva Eida and degenerate a lot of Bisume Nisa. So it's not a regular Hadlokis Ner Chanukah. It's sort of like a Bisume Nisa Dikim Mitzvah. And therefore he says emphatically, Ba'oisa Hadlokis or Beisa Knesses, ain't Adam Yoitzabo. The Gabai the Shamish cannot be Yoitza. But Sarah Lachs Lahad the Kalecha de Vesoi, the Mitzvah Ner Chanukah Ner Ishu Beisoi. And the Ramo and Tofresh Ayin Aleph Zayin says Beferish, no, you can't be Yaitzu with that locker that takes place in Shul. So we could say for the person that wants to just hop in that locker in Shul, even if you hold that you don't need a bias, you could be Yaitzu in someone else's house. But the Shul's ad locker is not to be Yaitzu. That's just to comply with the Minig Yisrael. We'll soon see if the Shamash lives in that building or Yeshiva Bacha that lives in the Yeshiva, that might be different. Question, what would you say to the following, and it's not a academic question, it's a real question. You have a real shul that there are many men in Minyanim, but it's outdoors. Is there a chiv, are you allowed to light in a shul that's outdoors? A bias, I mean, like be a regular person, you need a bias. Outdoors is not good. But maybe since the shul's adlock is a different nature, maybe outdoors is good. Now, which shul is outdoors? That's the Halu Kaisal Maravi. It's outdoors, but it's a shul, again, many, many minyanim. So Rabbi Yashiv is quoted in Ashtray Ish Reish Tamach Beis by the Kaisel, E.F. Shulavarech, Tzarech Liyaz Bayis. Apparently he's assuming, of course, you have to have a bias, and therefore the, the, the lock in the shul also has to have a bias. So if it's not a bias, now he does concede in the Ma'ora, the cave next to the, the Kaisel, that you could like, that's a bias, but not in the outdoor Kaisel itself. Now I saw the Binyam, the Oznidbru in Vav Ayane says, if you could make a bracha by the Kaisa, that's the Shitasai, that you could even light uh, outdoors. So that's not a Chiddush. But Rabbi said, what's possible to say is that, true, a, a, a regular person to light outdoors, there's no Havamina, like these Paiskim. But the Din in Beis Akhnes says, it's not a Din at Lokas Nerchanak, it's a Din in Pesumen Isa. 
So maybe that mitzvah is a din in the shul. And Reis Apella, the same Ashrei Yish on the bottom, he quotes Rabbi Yashiv as saying that by the Kaisel, even though it's not enclosed, there's no roof, but as long as it's a din base at Knesses, you could light there. Bibracha. Just tickle the steer, Rabbi Yashiv Sak. But I saw the river Sephraim and Dalek Kuf Samach Dalad Samach Gimel says he, he felt and Rav, and Rav, Rav Sternbuch feels that for Ner Chanukah in the shul even by the Kaisel because it's a different nature with a different guidelines. A lot has been written, believe it or not, especially in the year Tov Shilam Madal, you understand why, about soldiers that are Mamish Tachas Kippas Hashemayim. That was the aftermath of Yom Kippur War. I saw Rav Shleim Zalman, Ali Chashleim, Reish and Tesser, and Rabbi Yashva, and Ashri Ish, Reish Samachvav, both say that basically a soldier, if he's mamish outdoors, then he can't make a brach on their Chanukah. But if he's in a tent, or if he's in a trench that has a covering, or, believe it or not, or if he's in a tank, a tank is enclosed, he can make a brach in any of these scenarios when he has a roof over his head, or be it a tent, or a trench, or a tank, he can light and make a brach on it. Because for Hilcha is near Chanukah, you don't need a bias of Kol Terakula, you need something on top of your head. An outside, outdoor gathering, so again, to us, it's not a bias, there's no Havamin. As Nidbru and Yun Aleph Lamed Beis Lashitasei holds, you could in fact light there and make a bracha. If someone is traveling all night, he's going to Montreal, to Toronto, and he left before this man, he can't light at home, and he's traveling the whole night, and he's going to get to his destination, it's going to be after Allah Yisashacha, can he light in a car? So obviously, you have to make sure it's very safe. He's taking a little uh, chvesa tilit and he's going to light uh, not too many. He's going to light just one to be yitzah the ikka mitzvah, but it's going to be safe. So the truth is, it's not so hard to believe that he's yitzah in a car. I mean, people eat in a car, and most of the family are sleeping. I hope the driver doesn't sleep, but everybody else is sleeping. And it has a roof, so it doesn't have, the, first of all, it has dal and dal, but even without dal and dal, you might see a I mean, you could make a a car into a sukkah, so why can't the car be a place for Ne'er Chanukah? If the Marsham says you could light in a train because you pay fear, a car that's your moving by is, how could it be worse? The Rechashulchan says an agola and a train, and we saw even a tank, and I talk a saw, Ali Chashloima, Reish Tamachalaf, the Mishnah Loch is Ayin Peivav, and the Kaivat Halach is Yeral of Ches, and many other pais can say that in a car, of course, if it's safe, you could light with a bracha. Now, Rav Yashiv in the Ashri Yish, Reis HaMachbeis, has a tremendous chumrah, and he says, even the marsham that holds you could light on a train is with there a few days. Because typically in those days, they didn't travel just an hour or two, they traveled many days. But just one night, he feels, you can't make a bracha on it. But I don't think any of the other paiskim had that um, condition. It seems once you're overnight, and we hold, you could go to someone's house overnight and light in his house, so a car that you're there overnight would be enough. Let's say the person uh, that's traveling in a warmer climate, he says, why should I light in the car? It's, 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 you know, it's a little, very small. Let's stop for supper. Let's say he's in Australia where it's nice in summer weather. We'll stop for supper, we'll have a picnic, and we'll light by the Suda. That's no good. To light on a table outdoors is no good. Believe it or not, the car is more of a chiyav than the outdoors. And as far as Pashit, you need a maisa in a, a bias. A train, or today a boat, a boat today is certainly indoors, you could light and make a brach. The real problem is when a person is traveling by plane, and he's leaving Brooklyn before this man had locked and he gets to the airport, and you have to wait, and wait, and get a flight, until you get there, it's rolls the next morning, so, it's a problem. Now someone says, I'm going to light by my seat. If they put it out, it's their problem. I said, no, no, it's your problem. <laughs> you know, he will make a lot of pursue nisa if he lights on the plane. I mean, the last fellow that put on fill on the plane made, uh, you know, there became uh, headlines. Certainly, when a person lights a fire on a plane, that's a horrific chal Hashem. And about that's not an option. So the eight says, like, you didn't have done for theirs. If a person's not home, he points his wife or children or a shliach to light for him in the house. But make sure that not to light on the plane. Now, what's a little more of an issue, but not much more, is he's sitting in the airport terminal for an hour. Could he light there? So again, I don't think security would like it, I don't think they would allow it. But even if they would, 
What's that for the airport terminal? It's not your bias. You're not, you're not even paying rent for it. You're there for an hour or two. It's not like the Masham's train that you're there overnight. It's not your bias. No, if you hold like those sheetas, you don't need a bias. You can light, and a homeless person lights. It's not worse, but again, it's not practical. There used to be a common scenario. A person that was single would eat suppers in a restaurant. So the stifler's quote in Erches Rabbeinu in Gimel Amit Chavav, who says a chiddush with very mustavra, that even if we hold the makam achil as a place to light, that's if it's your makam, so what's better, achil or sheina? But a restaurant, you're in and out, it's not your makam. So the fact that you eat there every night is not a kvias, it's not bias, and therefore you can't light in a restaurant. A person that must work late, he can't come home. Of course, Hanukkah is an Erish who basically should be home on time for our family, but let's say he can't. And he has the following suggestion. He owns the store or he owns the business. Can he light in his business, in his store? The fact is he eats lunch and supper this time of the year in the store. And sometimes people sleep in their business if they have a bed, if it's, if it's feasible. So the question is, could he light in his store? Or when he gets home, late at night, light at home. So of course, the Ica is his real home. But do we look at the store or the business as a second home? Is it at least like a train? It's more than a train. This is his, he owns it, and he's there, and he eats, and he sleeps there occasionally. We could look at it like he has two homes. And if he really wants to light Bisman, I think it would be an option to light in his store. And the truth is, we find a very similar psak. The Magan Avram in Tov Reish Mem, Sif Katan Tezayin, has a question, a person has a store, Chutz Le'ir, L'chari could eat out of, the, out of a sukkah on sukkahs. Because he's a hol derech and he has no sukkah. So, so no, you're making a mistake. Shom Beisai, when he has a store or a business, so he has two homes, in the city and in the store. So, Shom Beisai, and he has to make a sukkah in the office or in his store. So I understood from this that a person that has a business or a store has now two homes, and he spends a lot of time in his store or business. So the Chayr, it makes sense that if he wants to, he could light Bizman in the store, and his Yaitzu would there. But the Bible said, we could do better than extrapolating from Hilchas, from Hilchas Sukkah. We have a Beferish Mishnah that you could light in the store. And we all know the Mishnah. In Baba Kama, Da Samach Beis, Amad Beis, a Nazikin Shaila, but someone that's going with a Gomo Toon Pishtan, that went into the Menorah that was in the Chanos, and made Hezek. Now, why is there a menorah in a chanos? Obviously, as the Gemara says, it's an air Hanukkah that was lit in a chanos. So we see midina mishnah, you could light in a store. So therefore, the ma'isa, if someone feels he wants to light bizman, avad he can light in a store. Now, people say oh, it's not yom tov dik and lighting. Where who's looking? Who, I want to light when I get home. No, gesundheit. That you could also do. You could wait till you get home, as long as it's before alois hashach and there are people that are still up. You could light at home. This is also an Egeya. Someone who asked me, he wants to go from his workplace to a chasana. He's going to come home, mamish, early morning, and that's not Yom Tov to light early morning. So again, that would be an option. He's there in the store, Bashas is man of He could light there, finish working, and then go to the chasana. If he wants, that would be an option. <coughs> the, I did see the safe and mitzvahs near issue base at the end of Simon Hay quotes of Shlomo Zalman, very brief. Not to light in a store, let the wife light at home. Now, the wife light at home is, a, is a, a certainly an eitzah. If the person at work, his wife could be eitzah him, that's ishtik gufa goes both ways. But why you can't light at, in the workplace, he doesn't say why. why? I wonder why. The last group of questions are rather very important is when someone is not home. Let me give a, a common scenario. A person could have a mother that's almona and she refuses to light herself, she doesn't want to do that. Can she light together with the children? She's coming, going for the suda and going home to sleep home. Can you light if it's not your bias? So this we saw earlier that besides the fact that we hold, that you have to have a bias, you can't light, keep us a keep us a shemayim, it has to be your bias. We saw the Taz says that lighting in someone else's home is like lighting in the street. You're not yoitzer. So therefore, in a case like this, an almana that lives alone, there would be a simple etzah, 
let one of the children or grandchildren go to her house, light for her, b'shlichas of her, and the shliach could make the brachas. Okay, you shouldn't make shechianos. It's a stickle of an issue, but he can make the two brachas lechatchila biyitza biyalmona, and then go home and light in his own house lechatchila all three brachas. That would be the best eight. If that's not feasible for whatever reason, so there are some that want to say that since they're eating by the the uh, mother eating by by the by the son, it would be considered somewhat of an achsanoi, and if and she's mishtatet bepruta. She could be yaitza with the children's hadlaka. Doesn't have to light herself. Now, of course, you don't have to say, yeah, give me a dal, I'll be, I'll be yaitza. You could be makna her. You don't have to tell about this whole thing. But it, it's not so posh that achsanoi for herself is good enough. It would be certainly better if someone lights for them in, in the, the woman's house with the bracha, and that would go to al which is avada, an eitza that works. A traveler that's traveling and finds himself in a, in a, in a foreign city, Again, to ring a bell on a random home, could I light in your house, doesn't work according to many paiskim. If he gets invited for the night, he could light there, I'll be a bias for that night. But to just light and go is an issue. And according to those old, you don't need a bias. Of course it's okay, but we go with the sheet that you need a bias and your bias. Question. We said earlier, could someone be yaitza with the adlaka in the shul. So that we said, someone just comes from Ayurveda and wants to be yaitza with the shamish, so the shamish is not yaitza, and the mispal is not yaitza, that's certainly. The question is, if someone is living in the shul, the shamish that lives in the shul, or much more commonly today, the bachrim that are in yeshiva, and let's just, I'm talking about the, the, the building is, the eishel has the dining room, dorm, and base medrash. And there's one bacha who's doing the mini gisrael of lighting in base marriage of the in the chamayrif. Can he be yoitz with that at locker? Because he's any I'm lighting in the building, so why can't I be yoitz with a light in base marriage? So the truth is, light to be vash. We saw earlier the rivash insists that you can't be yoitz in base marriage, base aknesses. But if you look at the lash and he says because it's a mitzvah of ner ish ubeisai, and the shamish has a home, let him light at home. But it's almost mafurish that if the Shamish or the Bacha lives in that building, and this building is his base, so he's there for Hanukkah, so once it's your bias, you could light in this room or that room. Now, maybe you'll say, the Mokam Achil is better, but the base Medjah is not Mufka. And I did see the Yad Seifa, when he had a Oireach that stayed in the base Medjah overnight, he was Mechabed him to light in base Medjah, and then he was yoitz of the mitzvah, and the shul had a very quality hadlok. Now, again, in a yeshiva, the minik today is, because of safety purposes, besides that, but the bachim all light in dining room. Okay, that's good. But this bachim that's lighting in Beis Medrash, so why can he be yoitz if he has a mind to be yoitz at L'shem hadlok? Lamaisa, he eats in Beis Medrash sometimes, and sometimes bachim sleep also in Beis Medrash, and we all fall asleep occasionally. But I saw him big Yechidosh. Rav Oznan Chayla Gimel, Simon Pei Gimel was asked by a bacha that, that learns a whole day and stays Hanukkah for supper and learns night said and goes home just to sleep. He just sleeps in his house. So Rav Oznan says he could lie taka in yeshiva and even in Beis Medrash. Ah, he sleeps at home. He doesn't sleep in the dorm. He's not a dorm boy. But he says this is Bei Rav Onan. A Beis Medrash is the bacha's bias. Gemara says you're allowed to eat and sleep in Beis Medjish, you learn there. So even though he's sleeping elsewhere in his parents' home, he's enough of a living in the yeshiva that he could light. In Beis Medjish, not the two. The Pupar of Ayan Yosef, Gimel Tov Dalet, he says the Psak, he says for his yeshiva, where obviously it was a, uh, the dome, the dining room, and the Beis Medjish one building, it seems that the Bachim lit in Beis Medjish. I think all the Bachim, that's what he said. Because this is the Ikah of their place. And he says, not Machmer. Why do we say Maka Machila Ikah? Because the Achila is, is important. But you have a Bach that's learning 12, 14 hours a day. So the Maka of Limud is more Ikah. So I, that's what it seems that he told the Bach, all of them, Light in Beis Medjish, that's the Maka of the Hadlaka. But certainly, if the Bach that's Taka being lighting for the Beis Knesses, if he has a mind to be yait with that adlaka, I saw the Ali Shleim, Yud Dala, Yud Gimel, the Kaivit Allah, Tezvav, Tez, both say that if indeed he has a mind to be yait with that, 
He's yaitze, and there's no reason to light again in the dining room. The minig entails, because of a tragic fire that took place many, many years ago, and I think more than one bacha was killed in the fire. So the minig is that the yeshiva, and then the, in those days, there was hundreds of bachim, didn't light. One bacha lit, and was yaitze the entire yeshiva, like the minig of Svardim, Ner Ishu Beisai is Mahajan that you light every night more and more, but one Bacha lights. The Minigan tells Ada Yoim is that that Bacha lights in Beis Medrash and is Yoitza the entire Yeshiva. I saw a quote of Hashem the Sat Merav that he said if it be up to him, he would have one Bacha light when it comes to Zman in Beis Medrash. All the Bacham would stop learning for a moment or two, whatever it takes to light and sing, and then back to learning. And then you'd be Yoitza with one Bacha. They wouldn't close the yeshiva and go home. He said it would be up to him, he would do that, but he doesn't think it would be a very popular innovation. <laughs> you know, but don't forget, uh, Chanukah is the Yom Tov Ter Shabal Peh, and we won the war, not the Yavanim. Ashkicham Ter is not our philosophy. So he said he wanted to do this, but it, wasn't, uh, it didn't work, whatever. He was afraid to, to broach the idea. But I definitely see from all of this that a bacha that lights in base magic could be yoitz. Now, Rabbi Shleim Mazalm and Alech Shleim is quoted as saying that in his yeshiva he asked a svar the shabacha to light in base medrash. Because anyhow he won't light, so this way it's hakol revach. In many yeshivas they ask a younger man to light in base medrash, so therefore he zicha could light at home later and he's not yoitz with that, but again, if it comes up that there's just the bacha that's around and the bacha lights, he could be yoitz. Now, to say I don't I mind not to be yoitz and I'll light in the dining room doesn't seem to. to it really makes sense. Why are you being garam baruch Hashem at tzricha? Now, some from a bacham, I know they light in base marriage, they yaitz with that, but they mishtat the pruta with someone that lights in the dining room. Okay, it's not wasted money. Fine, because I'm to hate. A tmimistic person once asked me, he's making a big a masiba or asifa, indo asifa. He wants to light near Hanukkah with a bracha because he says there's probably going to be a few fryer people and they'll be yaitz with this adlok. Now, lemaisa. It sounds very ideal, but it's not right. Because there is no minig of lighting by an asifa. The Beis HaKnesses minig, there's, there's a lot of written if you're allowed to make a bracha. Some say you don't, the minig is to make a bracha. But the stam to make a bracha just for presum nisa, it's a very novel idea, but you can't make a bracha on that. I, the friar person that's there, but if it's not his bias, he's not even yaitzu with that. So that's why I saw the Menchaz Yitzchak, Aliyachaz Shleimah, Shevet Alevi, the Devayats of all say, but to light and make a bracha by any gathering for Pesum Enisa, Avad, you can't make a bracha. You want to light? Okay, but not to make a bracha. Rabbi Yashe, don't make a bracha, don't light at all. Maybe he's concerned that people will misinterpret this, that you can light any old place, but definitely you need a bias or a basic Knesset, but not any Pesum Enisa. Bayan Yosef in Gimel Tafalov says Beferish, especially in Alto Asifa Avada, that's not the place to light. A challenging question if a people have a chasana, and again, it's, they're leaving the house before this man, they come home very, very late. Is it an option for the chasana kala, the mechutonim, or guests, or all three, to light someplace in the wedding hall? So the embassies in Svara, none of them could light there. It's not a bias. It's a very expensive uh, sudas mitzvah for the mechutanim and the chasim, but it's not a bias. And Rabbi Yankif in the Emes Liyaka, if it's a, if 590, says to light in a chasin hall, he says, was the galechta. Right, if you knew Rabbi Yankif, he said galechta, he meant it. In other words, it's, it's a joke. It doesn't make any sense. And other paiskim discussed when should, where should the chasin call light before or afterwards, but no one entertained the thought to light in a chasin hall. I did see a big chedish in the Kovitz Ha'aris, Yud Beis, Kovitz, I'm sorry, Kovitz Ha'lochis, Yud Beis, Chav Beis. And he says that the Chassan probably could light in the Chassan hall. He make, makes the following chedish. The Chassan left his house before this man, so he can't light there. Now he's out of his father's house, so he's like a homeless person. He's not in his father's house, so he doesn't have a new home. And he says that even though the Taz says you can't light in someone else's home by supper just and go home because there's no kviyas. But this is a major kviyas. This is getting married. And he's paying a pretty penny for tonight's supper. <laughs> and I would add also, especially if he's a frumma and he, and he, and he rents the yichud room for yichud, so he has a kviyas. 
So he says like this, I know people are mafakpik, and rather his father was one of the mafakpikim, but he says, I know people are mafakpik, but I don't see what's the problem for the chassin to light, and the chassin to to be yoytze in the wedding hall. There are very many hours, the suda is a, very much a kviya sticker. His main chiddish, the taz's problem is to go to someone's house for supper, that's no comparison to your bias. But if you have no bias, the chassin is homeless, and this is a major kviya, that's enough. Then he says, maybe from the Chatanim also, better would be if they light in their house before they leave, or if they light afterwards. But he doesn't see what's terrible if they light in the chasen hall, that's their kviyas. Now, he says, guests have no place to light in the, in the wedding hall because the guests are not paying for this, it's not their kviyas. But he says, a guest that's chutz le'ir, the chasen hall, the chasen is a lake and he's living in Brooklyn. Maybe it's like he has no bias. So again, he considers... Everybody perhaps could light in the wedding hall. But again, this is not the minig. The minig is the chasen or kala light either before if shayef, if there's a local chasen, or they could light even after the chasen, as late as it is, as long as it's before alois and someone is up, you could light in the bias. Again, l'chatchel, you both light bisman, but this would be a situation, there's no other choice. A patient in a hospital, nebuch, nebuch, that's their bias, if it's there overnight or certainly for a few days, so we find a safe place, and that would be the option. The child, the, the grandchild who's staying with the patient will be the same option. If he's staying overnight, so tonight he's stationed in the hospital. Wherever they allow the patient to light, he could light as well. If he talk it busy with the chayla, so forget about Ner Hanukkah and the Isaac of Mitzvah. And one last question, someone told me he was traveling by plane, and someone told me, very strange fact, you can't figure it out, Get a flashlight and light a flashlight on the plane. This is white flashlight. Why not be more the conventional electric menorah? So let me tell you what this person heard. The point is to light on a plane, a fire, again, is obvious, obviously not an option. But to light an electric menorah, I'm talking about in a house, also has many problems. First of all, you need an ash. Today's electricity, if it's LED or fluorescent, is no ash. So, you're not, it's not like near Shabbos that you need light for cover Shabbos, Oynik Shabbos, Sholem Bayis. You need an ash. It's not ash. Additionally, there's a technical problem that's more than technical. To make a bracha, you have to have a half hour worth of shemen there, Bishas Hadlaka, to make a bracha. So then, since it has the potential to burn, you can make a bracha on that. But typically electricity, any light in your house or any electric menorah doesn't have a half hour of power there. It's constantly being generated and being fed to your connection. So it's not an ash and it's not a half hour of shaman. So it's basically a, a effort of futility. But if someone wants to be creative, he could say, I'll take a flashlight that has batteries. So the half hour potential of, of burning is there. And I will find for my children or grandchildren an old flashlight they took to camp that has a incandescent bulb, not LED or fluorescent incandescent bulb that has a filament. And I'll hope for the best that the filament, the glowing metal, is considered ash. So I have an ash with a half hour of oil. But the problem is, even if you hold that that filament is ash on Hilchis Shabbos, it's like Machama Matchis. But Mechama Matchis is still not yet Eish. It might be Eish like Abish Shabbos. So it's better than nothing. But if you're on the plane, the eighth night of Hanukkah, get eight flashlights. I'm afraid of Hanukkah to you all. Shame, you should return like you'll be Gashikach or Smith for today's share. Smith will say the Sikkim of today's share in five minutes. Brothers Hashem. I'm
take a nap for a half hour. Well, you don't dig though, so it's like a base on. Only oxidite is not base on. You don't know that, but that's what I do. I come home too late. Oh, 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 oh,
Which which time now? Depends which way. Maybe this should be a zero. It's very interesting. He didn't like his life this long. He was still a zero in a different time zone. Sorry, like I was saying about the zero. Which is why? That's a good question. I don't know. I said it's like it's like it's on. Maybe it's a 20 minutes later. What do you want? Like they say it's going for the sheet of three and how far she has 20 minutes away. Yeah, it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that he travels a lot. That's a different category. I don't know. I'm saying time zone. Not quite so. Double E of shark. The Ishtik is good for his unique. Not to mix it with the Yitzchak. But the Peter Shams can certainly show itself. The Friday night. I don't think so. Those that say it's a fear on the God, one said this my shit. How would you have a person who would have been saying? Not one? Simply, right? Really? You're allowed to tell you. How do you know it's a problem? Guys, let's go. His wife. Let's figure it out. He's where he was. He was married. His wife was married. He 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 was married. No, no. Okay, let's go. The point is that soon. So the key is. Yeah. Okay. Fifty-two is the tape, by the way. Never. Fifty-two. Yankee Jason. Yankee Jason. Okay, Rabbi Say. We did it Sunday right away, I don't remember. Rabbi Say, over, over here, not, we're not away from yeah, home. This is our home. Again, but I did it twice, I got it. We're, uh, we're going to hear the Sikkim from today's Shir Hanukkah. If, you're away, if you happen to be away from home. But don't forget, here's your home. Shh. <clears throat> Just a short summary we learned today, Be'ez Hashem, the, as we see, the but the nature is unique. It's a probably an unpress, unparalleled mitzvah that it's a chayvas aguf on every man, woman, and child. But you could be yaitzah with someone else because that's the din of issue beisai that the father could be yaitzah, the whole family. The wife is yaitzah with the husband, even though the wife is not yaitzah matzah with the husband. But it's a chayvas aguf that can be discharged with a ner issue beisai. But the fundamental question of today, is a bias necessary? Can a person that's homeless or he's camping out or he wants to eat, wants to light in someone else's house, does he have to have bias? Does he have to have his bias? That's a machloikis rishayinim, paiskim, aracha, mulna aracha. According to many paiskim, rishayinim, and haintika paiskim, you need a bias and you need your bias. As the Taz says, lighting by someone else's house like lighting in the street. In other words, both are unacceptable. There are mekilim, and their logic is, if the mitzvah is pursue menisa, why should it be totally in a bias or my bias, as long as it promotes a pursue menisa. According to those shittas, you could light camping out, you could light the homeless person could light. But since it's a chiyav, uh, that's an extent of moich eksusa and chayla psachim, we try to do it right, and a person should try to find a bias, and better, more so, lighten his bias. But we did see that a semi-bias, La Marshall train, that although it doesn't have Hilchas bias in other areas, but it's considered his bias, and all agree that would be a place to light. In fact, if you have a tiny bias, less than dollar a dollar, it's also good. It doesn't have to have Hilchas bias, it has to have a... Give the person the, the, this feeling that he's in a bias for Hanukkah. Many insist that you have to light in your bias, you can't light by someone else's suda. And overnight, you can't light, shouldn't light tachas kippah sashemayim, in a tent is okay. 
A shul is only for the minig, for the for the takanas chazal orchim that are just coming and going. Cannot be yitzah by the kaisel. I think the minig is they do light because it's a base aknesis the kadloka and the ma'ara certainly of the kaisel you could light. Soldiers should not light if they're sleeping outdoors unless they have any covering, whether it's in a trench or a tent. Outdoor asifa or even indoor asifa, we do not light with the bracha. It's not any pursume nisa. It's presume, It's the basicness, takanas chazal that that allows a bracha to be said. A car, a boat, a train, you could light with the bracha pashtis. A plane, it is not feasible. An airport terminal is not a bias to best dates when a person can't light when he's traveling to make a family, a wife, or a shliach to light. A restaurant, even though it's makam achil, it's not his bias. It has no personal shaykhs to that. At work is a good idea if a person wants to light bizman as long as there's pursue menisa. Your house, where a person is, is the place to light, just for supper is not an option. And almona that doesn't want to light, Avada, I should have mentioned, if she, if she wants to light or she should be told to light, that's the best aid, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with a, a, a woman lighting with all the brachas, it's no different men and women, but if she refuses to light, then someone should light for her, or she lights by the children, and there's mishtata bepruta as an achsunai, but if she's mishtata bepruta, she doesn't light herself, she's yait, so hopefully with the children. In a shul, if the person lives there, or the bacha in yeshiva that lives in that building, could be yaitz with that adlach, if you, if you lit it l'shem mitzvah, or some yeshivas, a svardasha, bacha lights, or a young man lights, so he could light at home, and no one's yaitz in the shul, except for the minig, and a chasana, it seems like the most poiskim assume it's not the option for anybody, either light before the chasana, or after the chasana, as long as before alois, in a hospital, you could find a place that they allow the chayla and the mishamshav if he's there overnight to light. And a flashlight is certainly not enough to make a brach. Even the best scenario that has batteries and it has a incandescent bulb with a filament, it's still not ash, but a bracha, a, a, a lighting could be done without a bracha. How's the dying? Store, store. Remember the store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying, so why has it got the same way it is? But this is, he said, you see, it's not. 